So when you open CapCut for the first time, this is what you see. Now I already have a login ID with uh, TikTok. So I'm using that login ID. Now for your information, uh, CapCut is a software, a video editing software, which is actually developed by the same house from where uh, TikTok came. So if TikTok is banned in your uh, country, then maybe you will not be able to log in. Uh, but thankfully in the UAE, TikTok is available uh, in its full capacity. And um, I have installed the CapCut software. I'm using a Mac here and I have logged in. Uh, there is no additional benefit, just that if you log in, you can directly export and post it onto your account. Um, so that's how tic that's how uh, CapCut looks like when you first open it. So there are a few things that you have to immediately take notice of before you even click on new project. The most important is actually the settings. So I would like to go to the settings of CapCut right here and um, you can see the first thing that comes is where am I saving the files now this is a basic housekeeping rule you have to make sure that you are you know where you're saving your project files means all the files that the software is creating to help to work on your project so there's something called save to if you click on this you can actually go and specify where you want it now since I work from an uh, external hard drive so usually I have a project and I always save it in that project folder. So all my CapCut files, all my CapCut uh, projects are saved in this CapCut drafts. It, it creates it by default. Basically you specify a location in your hard drive where you want the project files to be. Not specifically for, for this. For all the projects, if you do not change it, this will remain, all right? So I'll, I'll click on open. So that's fine. I like this location. That is okay with me. If you want to um, keep clearing your cache to make your computer faster, you can choose, uh, and you can choose the cache size. Um, if you're not, un if you don't have an understanding of what this means, you can just leave it. If you click on edit, it gives you some basic ideas of frame rate. That's important because you'd like to have some control over what frame rate you're using to edit. Now for the web, the ideal frame rate is 30. So I'm leaving it to 30. This is how the time code, the, uh, you know, the, the, when you play the video, how it will be displayed, the timing. Okay. And then you have uh, an option for creating a free layer whenever you are creating a new project. I mean, this is not something important, so I'm just leaving it there the way it is. This is important. If you primarily are gonna be bringing images into your timeline and you have an idea of how long each image should be, you can specify that length. Here, you write it to five seconds. It's definitely five seconds is too much. I would say three is a good starting point, so I'm leaving it at three. For performance, if you are working on a computer which is very slow and it has got not much of resources and you're working in 4k clips and maybe you're working in 6k clips in that case you can always switch this option on so what it will do is that it will actually reduce the quality of or the resolution of the footage that you're working on and it will let you work at peace without any you know thing hanging or any kind of jitter or whatsoever so proxy is a good option only if you are working on a very slow system and you do not have enough resources to actually um, edit okay maybe 2k or a 4k uh, 4k resolution uh, files language um, if you are if you come from a different language you can choose a language uh, and um, english is here so i'm just choose have chosen english and that's it so that's my first step is that I'll do some housekeeping. I'll figure out where I should save the files. Number two, I will specify the image duration and the other things you have shown. This is a good thing to do because now when you click on new project, you know that you're getting a new project which is uh, lying in a particular location that you know. You also know that the frame rate and you also know that you know the what is the length of images that is going to come to my timeline when I drag them to it. So. That is the first step. That's what you should do in CapCut.